How's it going everybody? CJ here. Back another video. We're doing another first thoughts today. This first thoughts is on Extus Auric Overlord. This is a very, very cool card. It gives you a sorcery in the command zone. This thing is sweet. But before we hop into it, remember, down below, hit that. So, well, down below we got the Patreon and we have the TCG Player affiliate link. Both those support the channel. If you're going to buy any cards to talk about in this video, buy them through that link. Helps us out. We got a Twitch, we got a Twitter. And yeah, we got stuff down there. So check that out. And then um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like this video and comment down below what you're doing with Extus. Or if there's any cool synergies that I forgot to mention or didn't see that you found. So that way anyone looking back at this video will have them available to them. And we're going to hop into this. So Extus, Auric Overlord. This card is cool. I actually forgot that I had Double Strike because... I don't see why it has double strike. That's just funny. Like, it's just gravy. This card's good. This card's definitely a good, good, good aristocrats, a Mardu aristocrats commander because if you look at the backside, you've got a Rakdos sorcery, which is in your command zone. So this is going to be a very cool reanimator style deck, an aristocrat style deck. There's a lot of interesting things you can do about with it. And there's synergies with it. Because you can like cast a sorcery, sacrifice a bunch of creatures to it, and then cast Extus, and then return the sacked creatures to your hand by casting instant and sorceries. That seems pretty good. Plus, the, having the sorcery in the command zone means that you have an infinite mana outlet. So any infinite mana combos, which I get to at the end of the video, uh will just let you cast Awaken the Blood Avatar over and over and over again, and then you can just win the game through all these hasty tokens that also deal damage when they attack. So that seems very powerful. And yeah, we're going to hop into some of the cards that you can run inside of this deck. So first of all, this is a big Aristocrat set deck. You're going to want uh, sack outlets. I mean, you technically have a sack outlet in the command zone with you, but you're going to want more than just that one sacrifice outlet because that's just going to get more and more expensive. And you're better off having just good one time, like good at sack outlets that you can just use whenever you want to. So, Alter Dementia, which you can use to mill yourself to get creatures in your graveyard, which you can then bring to your hand. Seems pretty good. Ashnod's Altar, Phyrexian Altar, great cards. You got Yogmoth, another great sacrifice outlet. Uh, Immer, Immer, what's it called? Immerstum. Predator. This is a very cool sacrifice outlet. It's an interesting creature. I, I like this card. I, I keep forgetting about this card, and this seems like a good home for it. You have Viscera Seer, of course, and Goblin Bombardment, which Goblin Bombardment seems like a great uh, infinite sacrifice outlet to win the game. So you have all the infinite creatures. You might as well sack them to there to boop, 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 ping everybody. And yeah. So now I'm going to just start talking about, well, I mean, there's not really a section for jet. All right. So because there's a sorcery strap to this guy, as opposed to it two, being two different commanders, for the other MDFC cards, I've been doing like a section for one, a section for the other, and a section for both. This one's going to have a sorcery section because there's cards that synergize with it, but then the rest of the cards are just good inside the deck because if you're running the sorcery as your commander, you're still going to want these other cards in there because you're going to end up wanting Extus at some point most likely. So, first cards I want to talk about are Instants and Sorceries that seem very good with Extus so you can trigger Magecraft. I mean, you can build this however you want to. You can throw in whatever you want for Instants and Sorceries. I mean, like, Source of Plowshare and uh, Path to Exile seem the great includes in this deck because they're removal that also trigger Magecraft. But... Cards like that I'm not really going to talk about. I'm going to be talking about some very specific cards that add to like different strategies as opposed to overall good cards that you should be running anyways. So cards that I am going to talk about include cards that, like there's a handful of instances and sorceries that uh, help you to put creatures in your graveyard by discarding them. So stuff like Mind Rake, which you can make everybody discard. Yeah, Cathartic Reunion, Tormenting Voice, Faith of Looting, and Thrill Possibilities. All those let you discard cards to draw more cards. So you can dump some creatures in your graveyard and draw a bunch of extra cards. That seems very good. You can throw in Collective Brutality because uh, it's Escalate cost is discarding cards. So that's a good discard outlet. 
And then Village Rights is just a very good instant to throw in this deck because you can sack a creature to it, bring a creature back from your graveyard to your hand, and draw two cards for one mana. Very good. And that's all I want, really want to talk about for just instants and sorceries. Like, that's just to give you some ideas. But there's tons of instant sorceries you can choose from to put in this deck. You can make this a very heavy removal deck. You can make this a very heavy, I don't know, land destruction deck if you want to. Like, there's a lot of ways to do this. Just, I think that, in my personal opinion, what, like, the best synergies with this card are going to be cards that let you put creatures in your graveyard, so that way you can get creatures out of your graveyard. It just seems pretty good. And you're going to want to throw in a strong reanimator theme into this deck with, like, reanimate, which is also a good one in this deck because the sorcery. Uh, animate dead, necromancy, uh... What's it called? Unearth. Any of those cards seem great in this deck. You've got, uh, if you're going to do Aristocrats, then there's some very good Aristocrats cards you could throw in, being like Zulaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, Sir Conrad, and Cruel Celebrant. Sir Conrad being especially good because it triggers off creatures leaving your graveyard as well, which there's going to be a lot of. And then you got your Death Trigger cards. Like, I'm not going to name all of them because it's a lot. But there's the Grim Horror Specs type cards where you draw cards when creatures die. There's a Pitiless Blunderer-esque cards where you ramp when creatures die. Uh, Judith and those types of cards where you ping people, like you deal damage when uh, creatures die. And Pawn of Ulamog, which gives you creatures when creatures die. All Any of those types of cards seem very, very powerful in this deck. And... I've been, there's been a lot of really good Aristocrats commanders that have released recently, so if you've been up, keeping up with my videos, then you will have seen a lot of different examples of cards like these. I don't really want to go into them every single time, so I'm just going to, for like this one, I'm just going to lay out like the ground rules. You know, I got a lot of stuff to talk about with this one, so I don't want to spend too much time on one thing. Uh, so cards that you're going to want to throw into this deck to reanimate, so that way you can bring it back to your hand, recast, bring it and cycle it around, are going to be cards of good ETBs, because enters the battlefield triggers mean you get to cast it the first time, it dies, you can bring it back directly from the graveyard to play with reanimate and stuff, do it like that, or get it to your hand, recast it, so you can get the trigger again. Those cards seem very good. So like Ravenous Chupacabra seems like a great card in this deck, a good removal card. Solve Simulacrum, it even has a death trigger. Solve Simulacrum is just very good in these style decks. Fiend Hunter, you can, it enters the battlefield, trigger. You put the trigger on the stack and you sacrifice Fiend Hunter. So that way the leaves of the battlefield trigger happens and then you exile the creature. So then it stays exiled. That seems like a very powerful synergy in this deck. Dockside Extortionist to make a ton of mana as it just keeps cycling around. Uh, Gary, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, so you can drain your opponents. And Disciple of Bolas, just for like card draw. Seems pretty good. Um, and then just some specific cards that seem very powerful inside this deck. This is just for... Just in general. You got Young Pyromancer. You're going to be casting a lot of instants and sorceries. It'll create tokens that you can then use to sacrifice. It seems like it fits both sides of this card very, very well. And, I mean, but literally both sides. Like, it fits the instant, the creature and the sorcery sides very well, but also both sides of casting instants and sorceries and aristocrats. It's a great card in the deck. You got Tormod the Desecrator and Desecrated Tomb. Both of these give you tokens when creatures leave your graveyard, so that seems very powerful in this deck because you're going to be pulling creatures out of your graveyard a lot. Uh, if you do go with the heavy discarding aspect of the deck, like running all the cards that make you discard cards, like the instant and sorcerers that make you discard cards for good benefits, then you should run cards like Bone Miser, Braylon the Sky Shark, Sky Shark Rider, Archfiend of Ifnir, and Surly Badgesaur, so that you get some very powerful triggers off of doing that. So like a Cathartic Reunion, uh, or like if you cast Mind Rake, you and everybody else is discarding two cards. So you have Archfiend of Ifnir in play. You basically Elish Norn your opponents for that turn. Like, the creatures that they have in play all of a sudden. Like, they just get minus two, minus two permanently. And anything that's smaller, two or smaller is just dead. Very powerful. Oppression seems very good in this deck because it kind of turns all of your cards into discard cards. 
So you and but also your opponents. So you have the benefit of being able to bring your creatures back while your opponents probably don't. So you can cast like an instant, bring a creature back, discard a creature, or discard a creature. So you can play an instant, you discard a creature due to the oppression trigger. The instant is when the instant resolves, or hold on, you stack the triggers like this. Okay. So you cast the instant. First you resolve the oppression trigger and discard a creature card. Then you solve the extus trigger and bring that creature card back to your hand. So as long as you have a creature in your hand, every spell you cast, you don't have to deal with oppression while all of your opponents do. I think Painful Quandary is the same way. Let me double check Painful Quandary because I forgot about that card until right now. I, this happens to me all the time, where I'm doing one of these videos and then suddenly more card names pop up into my head. Yeah, Painful Quandary works very well for this as well. Like, all the time I'll be doing these videos and then I'm realizing, oh wait, I forgot about that card that does a very similar effect. That should I should mention that, but let me make sure I'm right about that card. It happens too often, as you guys probably know. Uh, another cool card for this deck is Fairy Macabre, because it's, it's, a, it's a creature that you can literally just discard from your hand to exile cards from your opponent's graveyards. So you can just discard it straight to your graveyard, exile some stuff, bring it back to your hand, do that over and over. So whenever you whenever you need to get rid of something, you can just grab that. It, that's a fantastic card in this deck, and I think that should be an auto include in any Exodus deck. Uh, Chainer Nightmare Adept also has a discard outlet on it, and this one actually lets you reanimate, so that's like go dipping into both sides again. Very, very good there. You can just bring stuff back. Like, you can discard something and bring something back. Seems good. And, oh, if also, if you're going to go into the, um, if you're going to go deeper into the stuff like Oppression and Painful Quandary, where your opponents have to discard cards, then you can throw in stuff like Turgrid, because then you can get the stuff. You got Guess Grimoire to draw extra cards. Waste Not for those triggers. And... In, and yeah, yeah. Uh, next up, I want to talk about uh, storm cards, specifically like grape shot, something cheap. A cheap storm card seems pretty good in this deck because uh, Exodus does trigger Magecraft triggers when you copy spells. So, say your opponent goes off and has plays like six spells in a turn, you can instant speed just cast grape shot and then get six creatures back. That seems powerful, or actually, it'd be seven. Like, that seems very, very good. Like, thank you, Sam, for mentioning that card to me. Mentioning the, actually just Storm in general to me. I didn't think about Storm inside this deck, but that just seems a good value. Grave Shot in particular seems great. It seems great. Uh, if you're going to be running a lot of Instants and Sorceries in this deck, Stone for or Sun Forger could be a very cool card to run. You can just pull out whatever Instant or Sorcery you need at any time. And if you don't have any in hand, then that means you can... Activate it so that way you can emergency pull something out of the graveyard like if someone's trying to exile it or anything like that Seems pretty good You're gonna want to be able to get the cards that you need in, into your graveyard so that way you can Reanimate them or pull them into your hand. So Entomb, Buried Alive, Gravebreaker Lamia, and Final Parting all seem like great includes in this deck And Gamble's gonna end up doing the same thing so you might as well throw that in uh, Sun Titan, another good reanimation card. Anything that's small, you can just bring back on ETB and it attacks. Luminous Broodmoth and Hoffrey Ghost Forge. Great cards in this deck because they work to, when you sacrifice something, it just comes back into play as opposed to you having to get out of the graveyard. So it just adds more time on the battlefield before you have to recast, which is very nice. Uh, Awaken the Erstwhile seems interesting. I don't know if it's good. But it seems interesting. You, everyone discards their hands and then makes a number of zombies equal to the number of cards they discarded. So it's a good way to fill your graveyard. But then you're in top deck mode. But everybody else is in top deck mode as well. And you have more access to your graveyard than a lot of the other people you're going to be against most likely. So it could be worth running. I'm very iffy about it, honestly, but it seemed like in home that this card actually would work. And as I've mentioned in a lot of these other red, white, and 
Mardu, or and a lot of these other red, white, and white black decks actually that have been coming out recently, or commanders that have been coming out recently. The Karma Guide Revelar combo seems very good. Just being able to cycle things in and out of your graveyard and just getting a lot of triggers and stuff. It's great cards. Karma Guide Revelar are very, very powerful together. Uh, you get if you want to be able to cast this thing as a source for a good amount of times, then uh, and. It, because you probably will be casting this a lot. Like if Exodus dies, there's a chance that you might want to cast the Sorcery side a couple times before you cast Exodus again. And that spell become, makes itself cheaper, so that means it's easier to cast. But that's going to mean that Exodus is going to end up being a lot of mana. So Command Beacon and Netherborn Altar seem great includes. You can also throw in cards like Alesha, so that adds to your reanimation theme if you go heavier into the smaller creatures. Rankle, it gives you a discard outlet, and a sacrifice outlet, and card draw, and it can mess up your opponent's stuff, so it seems good. Feather, Feather seems super good in this deck. And you'd have to build it completely differently, but <laughs> if you built it more around cards that target your own creatures, then Feather will be disgusting in this, because all you need is like one instant or sorcery, and you just keep casting it on Feather, or any creature that you have in play, and just keep pulling stuff out of your graveyard. Seems good. Uh, Alenda, the Dusk Rose, seems pretty cool, because it's a good sacrifice card. It uh, gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you sacrifice stuff, and then when you do sacrifice it, it makes a ton of tokens, and it's a card that's great to just bring back from the graveyard. It's just good. It's just a good card in this deck. Very good card in this deck. Also, all the tokens that it makes are just going to fuel the sorcery side of this commander. And then there's Athreos. Similar to, like, Luminous Broodmoth and Hoffrey, it gives an extra step. Athreos, uh, Athreos got a passage. Pa -la 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 -la. Athreos got a passage specifically. It, gets, it adds an extra step, so either your opponents are losing life, or you just get it straight to your hand. Easy. Uh, you're going to be sacrificing a lot of things. You're going to be bringing stuff in and out. So you can run Dictate of Erebos, Butcher of Malakir, Martyr's Bond, and Grave Pact. They work really well with the Sacrifice Synergies. And uh, it turns the Sorcery into like a board wipe if you needed to. Like You can just sack your entire board to the Sorcery side and all your opponents have to sacrifice everything. So that makes it, that's a very powerful synergy right there. And then there's some certain cards that just work very well with the sorcery side of this card. Assemble the Legion, that's very powerful in this deck. It will basically pay your commander tax. I mean, if, like, if you recast it over and over and over again, it'll pay the commander tax every time. So if you ramp up a lot, you can just cast it, sack the token, make it cheaper. Sack it, cast the two tokens, get rid of commander tax, make it cheaper. Sack the three tokens, Commander tax, commander tax, cheaper. Like, easy. Just being able to do it over and over and over again seems good. And it just helps to fuel it, which is very nice. And because this uh, the sorcery side can become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and if you can just keep the board presence up and keep cycling stuff into play, so that way you can recast a sorcery a bunch of times, then the, the storm cards from... A recent pre-con, I forget which one it was, will work very well in this deck. In this deck, being Imperial Storm, Skull Storm, Fury Storm, all of those just get stronger and stronger and stronger the more you cast it. So that seems like a cool include. And then you could also throw in uh, Commander's Insignia, which will have a similar effect except it buffs everything, and Jarena Kudro, which can become very powerful in this deck, a very potent card. Especially if you cycle it in and out of your graveyard and recast it. Because you're going to be making a lot of tokens with that in your deck. If you just cast your sorcery side a bunch of times. And that can help fuel the sorcery side. And yeah. Lastly, I just want to talk about the combos in this deck. I've got like four or five combos. Infinite combos. Just game winning combos that you can use to win the game with this deck. There's a ton. Like, any infinite mana combo in this deck wins you the game. So it's a lot of stuff. Uh, one of them being Worthy Cause, 
Where did I put that? There it is. Worthy cause. So the, it has been errated to, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, and it's got buyback. So for you cast this for three mana with buyback, sacrificing your Dockside Extortionist. And then you trigger the... And then uh, that will trigger the... Uh, Extus trigger, so then you bring Doxa Extortionist back to your hand. You replay it, and as long as your opponents are have a good number of artifacts and enchantments in play, I think it, they only need like four, then you'll make four treasures, you use three of them to redo that over and over and over again, and you make infinite mana. Seems good. And then you dump all that infinite mana into the sorcery an infinite number of times after you sack uh, Extus. And you make an infinite number of hasty creatures and win the game. You can also use the classic World Gorger animate dead combo to make infinite mana and do the same thing. Uh, Chain, of St Chain of Smog and Storm Kiln Artist work very well together. So, first of all, Chain of Smog. This card is... This card spiked super hard recently because of Magecraft. Like, this card just combos with any Magecraft card because you can just target yourself discard cards and then you can copy it targeting yourself over and over and over again. You'll lose your hand, but you can target yourself an infinite number of times copying the spell and then you get infinite copies of this spell triggering Magecraft an infinite number of times and you just win the game. Like, you can just do whatever, whatever the Magecraft ability is. With Storm Kiln Artist, it's whenever you cast your copy of spell, you create a treasure token. So you just target yourself an infinite number of times, and then you make an infinite number of treasures, and then you win the game through the sorcery. Seems good. Uh, next up, we got Ashnod's Altar plus Mardu War Shrieker and Nim Death Mantle. So you sacrifice Mardu War Shrieker to the Nim Death Man. So you had to attack. Say you attack with something this turn. Then you sacrifice the Mardu War Shrieker to your Ashnod's Altar, giving you three Mardu mana and two colorless mana. You then put four of that mana into Nim Death Mantle when it triggers, netting you one mana, putting Mardu War Shrieker back into play. You do that over and over and over again, and you can make infinite mana of any Mardu color that you need. That seems very good. You could also use Nim Death Mantle with Phyrexian Altar and Alendra, Alendra to Dusk Rose, and make infinite mana by is uh, sacking enough tokens so that way Alenda's got like five counters on it or four counters on it, so she's a five five. You sack Alenda, make it make it five tokens, sack the tokens to activate Nim Death Mantle, bring Alenda back and just rinse repeat and then make infinite number of infinite amount of mana you can also i'm pretty sure make an infinite number of tokens that might depend on the number of creatures or yeah it might depend on the number of counters on alenda like yeah i don't know if i uh i don't think i actually explained that correctly but it works, and it's easier if you see all three cards in front of you. I physically can't do that easily on my computer without taking extra time, so we're just gonna deal with it the way it is. But you get infinite to you can make it so you get infinite tokens, mana, and death triggers, and enters the battlefield triggers, and whatever other triggers you need, really. And then the last combo I want to talk about is Micaeus, uh the Unhallowed, which is gonna be a great include in this deck also for similar reasons to like Luminous Broodmoth and uh, Hoffrey Ghost Forge. And any persist creature in a sacrifice outlet, or Triskelion. Either of those, you use a Triskelion to ping your opponents and ping itself to death. And I mean, actually, I don't think you need to pin. You no, know, you do need to pin Triskelion. So you ping your opponent, then you ping down Triskelion, and then it comes back, and you just keep doing that over and over and over again. Or the persistent sacrifice, they'll enter with a minus one minus one counter, but because of undying, they get a plus one plus one counter, so they enter with no counter. And then you just sacrifice it again over and over and over again to like Ashnod's Altar and Infinite Mana. And yeah. So it's a lot of ways to go infinite. This this commander seems very powerful. It seems it seems sweet. I'm excited about it. And I hope you guys are too. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out, everybody.